Let's compare and contrast inserting standard hardware into assemblies in Onshape and Fusion 360. Here I am in Onshape. In order to place standard hardware into the assembly, you go to the insert command and you get a dialog box. Right now it is showing the objects in my current document. You can go to other documents, but in this situation I want standard content. And when I click on there, well right now it is set up for ANSI washers to be placed inside of here. Let's go to the standard drop down and instead of ANSI we can use other different standards like NAS or SAE. Here I want to use an ISO fastener and it goes to bolts and screws. That's good. From the drop down list you can change to nuts, o-rings, pins or washers. I do want a socket head screw but you can see from the drop down list you have a variety of different choices and then i have the size here which is m12 you have a nice convenient button for auto sizing the fastener and in this particular case i can select a circular edge or cylindrical face on the part let me click on there and then zoom in a little bit just so i can make sure i'm grabbing this particular one and it automatically changed to m5 for the length i happen to know that i want a length of 20 for this particular fastener you have a drop down list with a variety of different materials and then you can change the part number for how you want this to appear in your bill of materials and then we have the insert button here if i leave my mouse over the command for a moment i get the tooltip that tells me how to use it basically you can click the insert command and then drag and drop or you can pre-select the edges or faces of holes and then choose insert so for example i always like to pre-select I can select the cylindrical surface and then click on the insert button and it does some thinking and there you can see a preview of the feature then you can continue on placing other additional standard components into your assembly but i am going to hit the check mark to complete out of here let me expand the component in the parts list i'm going to use the eyeglass in order to turn off the display of that mate connector and I'm also going to right click on this component and then choose isolate so that you can see the geometry for the fastener in this particular situation you can see it's relatively simple we have a couple of cylinders it looks like we have a chamfer down at the bottom we have a round at the top and then a hex cut in the head of the fastener as well so relatively simple geometry we know exactly what that represents in our model so let me get out of the isolate command and there you can see how you insert standard hardware into an assembly in on shape let's jump into fusion 360 and take a look at the same thing so here I have the same assembly open in Fusion 360. In order to get our standard components, you can go to the insert drop down command. You can see that there are a number of different objects that you can insert in here. So for example, you can insert from the trace parts, supplier components, or insert a manufacturing part from parts for CAD. But here we have insert McMaster car component. Now, I'm sure this is very popular with a number of engineers and designers. So when I click on that, here we get a dialog box that opens up to the McMaster car website. And then I can choose, okay, I want a screw and bolt. And then I can choose, okay, I want a socket head screw. And we have a big list here. Let me see if I can grab the dialog box here. Oh, come on. There we go. Make this a little bit wider just so that it's easier to navigate. And on the left hand side of the McMaster Car webpage, you can start filtering down. So, for example, I know that I want metric. And then let's say I want to use an 18 8 stainless steel socket head screw. And then for the size, we don't have an auto sizing function, but I know that I want to use an M5 fastener. So I can choose that. And then if I scroll down further, I can choose the length, which I know I want to be 20 millimeters. And so now we just have a few choices in the list over here. So you can choose based on the threading where you have 
0.5 millimeter or 0.8 millimeter and the 0.8 millimeter comes in 18.8 stainless or the black oxide version well let's choose this particular one you just click on it and then for the product detail you have a drop down list let me scroll down you can choose the format of the file that you want to use in this particular situation i will use 3d step and then we'll choose the download command and then we'll give it a moment and now the fastener is in here i'm going to grab it i'm going to drag it away from the model just so that I can see it and then we can start rotating at least just to get the orientation somewhat correct and you can start again just like positioning it approximately where you want it to be but in order to define exactly where it is going to go you can use joints let me click the OK button out of there I'll use control and shift in order to zoom in and zoom out once again if you see me manipulating the models incorrectly in different CAD packages yeah I'm using way too many different software packages at this point and I always screw stuff up but anyhow let's go to the assemble command and we're going to put in a joint here you can see from the tooltip you can position components relative to one another and that defines the relative motion so let's click on joint and then for this component I will let it automatically infer the joint origin on the component and then infer the location in the assembly you can see how it positions the component that looks good to me let's click the OK button and you can see it in the model if I go to the list over on the left here you can see the joints in the model I'm going to use the little eyeball in order to turn off the display of that rigid joint and then you can see the component in the list and it uses the McMaster car part number because hey we just inserted this from McMaster car and I'm going to right click on this one and then down at the bottom of the pop-up menu here we have the isolate command so that you can see the geometry that you are getting and so it is beautiful I mean it's, it's really great that McMaster car provides models with this kind of detail people love that cat administrators we hate this sort of thing so for example when I was at Blue Origin hey you're trying to design an entire rocket and people are putting these kinds of components in there and this is just way too much detail you can see all the threads that are included in there plus there is a lot of detail in the top of the fastener hold on let me zoom in over here and you can see that if you have a lot of these components in your model then it is going to significantly slow down the performance when you are trying to retrieve this or make other different changes or when it has to rebuild the model so this is something that you want to consider hey I understand the fusion 360 market if you are a person who is a hobbyist it's really nice how you can see from your parts list and your bill of materials this is exactly what I would need to order from McMaster car however in a production environment especially for large assemblies well this can have certain drawbacks for you to consider but there you can see the difference in inserting standard hardware in on shape and fusion 360 I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshow.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.